Hello and welcome to Neverwinter Nights Hordes of the Underdark or welcome back if you have watched the original campaign Hordes of the Underdark is the second expansion that was released to Neverwinter Nights but from a continuation point it is technically an extension of the first expansion Shadows of Undertide which means that in order to get some sort of foundation for certain NPCs and whatnot, you would have had to have played through that game first. In order to bridge the connection between the original campaign and this expansion, there is a certain NPCs which will pop up that you know from the original campaign, but any reference made to the character is as if the character is the hero of Shadows of Undertide. Uh, yeah, I was half considering doing Shadows of Undertide, and I will likely do it at one point or another, but I didn't necessarily feel in the mood for low level gameplay because of course the first five levels are absolutely horrible in those kind of games. We will take the monk that we used to complete the original campaign and carry forwards into this expansion. So without further delay or ado, I don't, whatever you call it, let's get started with part one. Waterdeep, one of the greatest cities in all of Faroon. It is home to a multitude of peaceful town folk from all races and all walks of life. Beneath Waterdeep, however, lies a different realm. This is the deep dungeon known as Undermountain. Built by the mad wizard Halaster, here, Halaster tests adventurers who trespass therein with the deadliest of traps and the most dangerous of creatures. All but the luckiest meet their deaths in its dark halls. Regardless of this presence beneath them, the people of Waterdeep feel safe enough. For while one may enter Undermountain, it is rare that anything actually comes out. Until now, for there is another realm that exists beneath even Undermountain, a place of shadows and evil known only as the Underdark. It is here that the sinister dark elves known as the Drow rule next to other subterranean horrors unknown to most on the surface world above. And it is the Drow who now lead an army of these creatures into the streets of Waterdeep besieging the city from below in a campaign of blood and terror. And in their darkest hour, the Lords of Waterdeep have issued a call for a hero, someone who can face these dark elves and all their brethren in their own land, someone who can defeat the hordes of the Underdark. I trust that your preparations are complete. Very nearly, dread mistress. It should only be a matter of... Do not test my patience, Idlith. Would you have me wait? I, the terror of all the Underdark? The Dark Queen of Shadow? Uh, uh, of course not, my mistress. Then proceed. I wish to see this being who my agents say can stop my great rise. I do not believe anyone could stop you now, Great Valsheris. So I thought. But my agents have resources beyond the means of mortals. This one will be my undoing, so they say. If I do not act in time. So proceed, wizard. I will wait no further. Itu, Soleno, Samatka! Let's 
What is this? A surfacer? And a male, no less. Have your spells become faulty, fool? No, mistress. This is indeed an image of the one who shall defeat. I will not This image shows but a threat. It shall be dealt with like the others. You, male. Remove this dead fool and summon my red sisters. Now. Yes, dread mistress. And you, surfacer. Whoever you are and whatever threat you pose, you will not be able to hide. The drow shall strike swiftly and without mercy. That previous scene manages to set up the draw quite well, just showing what loving, caring individuals they are. But it's easy enough for her to be tough against an image of this character. Speaking of, if you want to have a look, you will see that everything we had from the original campaign is now gone. It's not technically gone, it's in a chest in this room, but a, set, a chest will be teleported away shortly. So, um, the game basically resets your equipment power level. You get a dagger for staying at the Ionian portal, which is the name of this inn, and apparently we wake up with that in hand, but being a monk, we don't want to use weapons, so... That was a draw that was meant to uh, kill us, by the way. She managed quite well. In comes the innkeeper's daughter. Uh, make whatever reference you want from that. And she seems quite um, disturbed by discovering a dead draw. She was alerted by the commotion. And of course, we are rather. Um, Concerned about whether the inn itself is under attack or not. But, of course, of secondary importance, which still is important, our equipment is all gone. And it tells us that there is some spare equipment in the armory, and we are welcome to take whatever we can, uh, whatever we want from it. And um, it is very bare bones equipment, but it is better than absolutely nothing, of course. So, uh, you can make some semi rude comments towards the girl if you want, but no point. For reference, by the way, I um, I think, and I hope people agree, I think the synopsis and method I used for the original campaign sort of worked. Uh, got through the game without spending 200 episodes. So I will carry that style forward, but for the first part here, it will be allowed to run its normal course because it's basically setting up the entire expansion. So anyway, here we are in the armory and we have various different miscellaneous things we can get, such as healing kits and some potions and some um, very, very basic things. As I said, this equipment is uh, just enough to get you started. Once we've gathered the set equipment, we have to move downstairs. Because, of course, the innkeeper's daughter's father is basically uh, awaiting us. We have been summoned uh, alongside other heroes in order to help Waterdeep. Because I think the introduction set up quite well that uh, Waterdeep is in a bit of a bother at the moment. And, of course, us being heroic heroes, we uh, answer the call. That is what heroes do. That is why they are heroes, you could argue. Oh, almost as good as um, our previous group. Hmm, almost. 
The thing is, and that is somewhat important, of course, is the fact that uh, while we lost all our equipment, the money. Didn't put all the money in the chest, we kept that in our... Never mind, I don't want to know where we kept it. Because we woke up barely dressed of any kind, or in any way, shape or form even, I think it's called. But we still got our money, and of course we can still buy stuff, so that may become relevant. This guy, he is uh, an old retired fighter, he has passed his prime, but of course we are going to make use of his experience and knowledge, because even though the old, old dog may not be able to f um, fight any longer, he can still be valuable by giving information and sharing experiences and all that, and just for being nice to this elderly gentleman, and also a bit of experience. The other NPC in this room is a monk, but it's not a, a fighting monk. They specialize in gathering information and basically write history down, a chronicler of some description. And uh, you can ask him if he wants to join the fight, but he is not there to fight, he is there to observe. So he wants to observe us. At a distance, safe distance, of course, I mean. We are the one true hero. So enough uh, knocking about. I'm not going to break down doors, not this moment at least. Let's head downstairs and see what's up. We meet some old friends from the original campaign. We have Bellino, we have... Uh, Dalen, we have Tommy, we have Shaman, Bodynock, and Grimnor are missing. Grimnor was probably, I don't know whether players didn't like him or whatever, but I mean, they, they got the reasons for not being here. You can say that it's a bit um, distracting that the voice actors for the different NPCs are different in the expansion compared to the original, but it's just one of those things you have to get used to. Anyway, they talk about why they're there, and they ask us because, of course, these NPCs don't know of this character, despite the fact that this is the character from the original campaign. That's what I was saying in the introduction, because this is technically the continuation of Shadows of Undren's Height. They talk about the hero of Neverwinter, but there's no reference to the fact that this character is the hero of Neverwinter, making for some bit awkward um, exchanges. These henchmen, of course, are not here for no reason. They are still henchmen, and you can still um, team up with them if you desire, but not in this moment. I just decided to uh, speak to them in case they had any information that would fill in quest lock. But uh, they don't. They just share thoughts on why they want to help. Apparently there's been offered a 100,000 gold pieces reward for assisting Waterdeep, which I suppose is uh, always um, a bit of a draw for certain people. I mean, this character's got 450,000 in his back pocket. Um, quite a large back pocket, but of course we tell them that we are here because it's the right thing to do. And by the way, there was also a certain amount of jealousy going on because apparently um, everyone's waiting for the hero of Undrentide to come forth and uh, gain admittance to the inn owner. Nothing can proceed before we are showing our presence and uh, some of them are not overly keen on that aspect, but we are the main hero. You guys can sort of... Of 
the personalities hasn't changed from Nibblemen tonight. Um, I don't think there's as many references to Linus clumsiness, but uh, Tony is still a rogue, Dylan is still a honorable barbarian, Shaman is still a um, fortune hunter, and Linus is still a caring individual. And of course we've got this little drunken guy who's um, convinced that he can clear out the labyrinth underneath, or the dungeon underneath the inn. And he offers us a head start, which we politely decline, saying we don't need that head start, and apparently likes that attitude, and passes out the drunk. It was good fun. Greetings. I am glad that you made it at last. I trust your accommodations were adequate? The city is under siege. Raiding parties of drow and other creatures rarely seen on the surface are attacking the city. We've determined that these attacks are coming through Undermountain. That's what we need to find out. The labyrinth of Undermountain was created long ago by Halaster, a mage whose power may have rivaled even Elminster himself. Halaster ruled Undermountain like a brutal tyrant. It was his magic that kept the creatures within from pouring out to overrun Waterdeep. Now Halaster has suddenly decided to unleash his creatures on this city, and we need to find out why. I want to know what that mad mage is up to. It's pretty clear that the answers we seek can't be found here on the surface. The only hope we have of stopping Halaster is to send someone down into Undermountain after him. I decided to stay quiet during that bit in case people want to hear what they had to say. Not all of it was voice acted. Again. Anyway, the inn comes under attack. Surprise. In case some people didn't necessarily pay attention, the Mad Wizard Halasta has created a labyrinth dungeon kind of thing underneath a water deep, and he's got all sorts of individuals present in that dungeon or labyrinth thing and he's always maintained control of them but suddenly they are breaking through to the surface which is something they normally wouldn't be doing so there's definitely something wrong either Halasta himself has released them or he's gone missing in some way shape or form and of course that is what we need to investigate This fight is a bit annoying because we've got uh, about 10 NPCs whacking away at the monsters and of course all the monsters enemies. If you don't get the killing blow, you don't get experience. Uh, that's a bit, yeah. Not overly happy about that. But we have an elevator installed in the inn that goes down to onto the mountain because that's probably the smart thing to have. But uh, we got to, uh, to see our little product friend here in uh, Resurrection Action. Uh, see it becomes relevant momentarily. And um, I, I will say one thing is I'm, I so love that character's voice. Oh, 
not as much as I like Arabas voice in the original campaign, but uh, yeah. This of course is an indication that monsters are playing through the under mountain, under dungeon thing, labyrinth dungeon stuff with monsters in. And we will have a, a shorter break in the action momentarily. It was a close thing, but I think we've managed to drive them back. I need you four to stay here and guard the well until the... Look out! <laughs> Behold the Beholder, for those who may not be aware, a, a Beholder is a very very evil creature which is a big blob of mass with a huge essential eye and that eye is basically completely and utterly neutralizing magic of any kind. They have different eye stalks which can each fire off an ability of more or less harmful art cure serious wounds, I was about to say cause serious wounds, disintegrate, turn to stone, that kind of stuff. Lovely, lovely creatures to fight. They are usually considered to be some of the most dangerous single individuals you can encounter. And of course our um, NPC friends chase after said beholder. Um, that may or may not prove to be a wise decision. But we are... Uh, we tell our good friend here about our dream, and uh, he says that he's not necessarily a believer in dreams and that kind of uh, semi-nonsense. Uh, that's his opinion. Feel free to have a different opinion. But he also emphasizes that he believes that we wouldn't mention it if we felt it was just something we had imagined. And that was what I was saying really about uh, basically uh, our, our character feels that the sequence we saw about the Valsharas um, getting an indication of who was going to be a threat to her was a dream vision being sent by someone else. It tells us that uh, we can go and get some equipment and we are allowed to leave the inn. We have to speak to Rayban, don't ask and tell him that we've been given permission, but we need to uh, speak to our little friend over here to buy certain pieces of equipment, and as I said before, um, I will like a voice acting. A fair evening to you. It is good to finally meet you in person. My name is White Vesta. I'm a priestess. So if you need healing or any temple supplies, I'm here to help. Everyone knows you, at least by reputation. Dernan told me you would be here when he asked me to come and lend my healing services to this mission. She's the kind of person you don't want to have asking you to do something you don't really want to do. Ah, oh, come on, you can do this itsy bitsy little favor for me, can't you? Very, very alluring voice, and I absolutely love it. Um, I, I like when, when people know what effect they can have on other people and not afraid to show it. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate people being true to themselves. 
Regardless, we've been given a rather resurrection, just in case we need to resurrect someone. Hmm. I wonder how our henchmen individuals are doing. We've probably got a rather resurrection purity, you know, coincidence thing. Just in case we want to resurrect something. Maybe, I don't know, an old battery or something. But anyway, she has uh, some equipment we can buy, and it is of uh, somewhat a better quality than what the army had, and we actually have a, a rope of the Dark Moon. And of course, because we have plenty of money, uh, it's not an issue to buy this stuff. It's not going to bring us back to the level we were at when we left the Neverwinds Nights, but we are definitely better off than we were with the armor equipment. Yes, they have added whips to the game, and of course it immediately provokes a certain image, I assume. But the main feature of whips is the fact that they give you the disarm feat. As a weapon though, they are not particularly damaging, uh, so you would only want to get them for the disarm ability. Now, in this game, the Rope of the Dark Moon has changed how it looks. Now that it actually looks like a rope, whereas in an Apple Winter Nights it looked more like a, a shirt and pants. And while I appreciate that it looks more like a rope, if you ever play with Grimnor and level him up, or tell, tell him to level up, he will be wearing um, Robe of the Dark Moon, the way it looks in this expansion. I prefer the old look, but don't want to do without the robe if I can avoid it. It is amazing to have haste. So uh, I'm not going to uh, dismiss it just because it looks differently. Speaking of looks, that's uh, something they've added in this expansion. Um, different dyes you can actually buy. So if you have an equipment piece that uh, you are not necessarily keen on having a certain color, you can actually buy dyes to change the color, uh, which is uh, a nice little touch. There's some more games that should do that. <coughs> World of Warcraft. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't say that out loud. So, I'm just uh, restocking on healing kits, because of course it's the cheapest way to heal, and even though we have a lot of money, we have a lot of money because we've been cautious in our money. Not, we, we haven't been cheap. No, 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 no. Cautious. There's a difference between the two. Um, of course, the fact that outside of actual heal potions, healing kits are uh, by and large more efficient for the cost. Significantly more efficient for the cost, I'd say. I don't know how to pronounce that. Eon stones or something. Um, stones that has been introduced in this game as well, or this expansion as well. Uh, they may have been present in Shadows of the I wouldn't know. Sorry, that's incorrect. But it says an, an item you can use that will give you a certain benefit for a certain amount of time. This one also gives a plus two to wisdom, but uh, because it's a one use per day and because I don't know, because I haven't tried it, I don't know how long it lasts, but blah blah blah, whatever. I've just will probably forget to use it, even though it is to wisdom. Um, the relic we got is something that is introduced in Shadows of Undertide, which of course makes it good fun when you haven't played Shadows of Undertide. But we were told we were allowed to leave the inn, so let's uh, head outside and uh, see if there's anything worth buying after speaking to Rayban. He's been told to leave everyone out, but of course, because we are the greatest hero he has never seen, we will um, be allowed out. And of course, because the city's under siege, we couldn't be under siege without fighting, so uh, we just interfere. And by the way, that reference was uh, the greatest hero he's never seen. I was thinking, for some bizarre reason, of Garrett in. Oh, from the Thief series, the greatest thief the world has never seen, as was the text on the box. 
I uh, need to get something done about this game. I, I set something up in the air a long time ago and I will want to do something about it. I just have not uh, the spare time to do it because it requires a lot of work. Anyway, there wasn't worth uh, there wasn't anything worth buying from out there, but I just want to showcase that the city is indeed on the siege. So we can speak to the innkeeper's wife and of course his daughter to proper heal her up, but um, she'll help likely be fine. Or water deep will surely fall. Well, hello there. So, heading downstairs, and in the next part, we will be actually going into the Onza Mountain itself. And as for now, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye.